This is Mr. Lieberman, and this is an example of how to do the the Europe Project slideshow. And instead of picking two European countries to show you, I picked two states that I thought were different enough to be able to show you some points of comparison. And, of course, you're picking European countries. The first thing that I've asked you to do is create a title page and this gives you an example of a title page and then I said oh, let me back that up a little bit so title page needs to have the name of both of your countries I have states but Alaska California in this case and your name needs to be on here by art get a haircut Lieberman okay now then we have California geography, I've asked you to handle uh, the geography in some way, and I have given you a map, and there are different ways of looking this up. When you go to Google, you can Google the, uh, what I did is I just Googled California geography, but I also Googled California physical map. And then the way you do this, because you don't have that much time, is as soon as you find one you like, you pick it and you copy it and paste it in, in here. And then hopefully you know what some of the things are called. You can use your book to look them up and you can list them. See right over here I wrote that there's mountains. There's obviously mountains in California, right? And they're called the Sierras. Uh, these right here are called the Sierras. And you have the San Joaquin Valley, this huge um, strange valley right here. A lot of the food we eat uh, gets grown here actually. The Pacific Ocean is out here in the Mojave Desert, which is right here. Okay, so anyway, uh, now I'm from there. That was easy for me to do. You'll have to look some of those up at some point. Um, bring your book with you. Use your book. and uh, But you don't even need your book if you're on the Internet, right? It just, sometimes the book is faster, though. Um, here's another one, California geography. Because of the geography and the Santa Ana winds in California and the way the mountains um, are positioned is what happens is these high winds uh, just go whistling through here at different times in the year, sometimes 30, 40, 50 miles an hour, just and, and they're dry, hot winds, and that's what causes a lot of the fire danger that you hear about in California. Uh, what about Alaska geography? Well, you have this, and I don't know as much about Alaska uh, because I've never been there, but here's the Seaward Peninsula right there, kind of a cool little uh, shape right there. And then the, the Alaska Peninsula, which you don't even see the whole thing. Well, I guess you see all the peninsula because then it's the Aleutian Islands that, that, that come way out this way, right? And here's the Bering Sea and the Gulf of Alaska. By the way, here is Mount Denali, which is the largest peak in North America. You'll see a photo of Mount Denali later in the show, in the slide presentation. All right, what about the California economy? Some of this was actually surprising me. The largest uh, sector in the California economy, they're called sectors, by the way, is education and health. Um, real estate is 17%. Trade and transportation is 16%. And I want you to really pay attention to this one right here for comparison. Uh, California, the California economy, 12% of the people work for the government. And then we have manufacturing. All right. Now, I notice over here with education, that's different, apparently, than working for the government. Something else to note. Well, let's look at a breakdown of the Alaska economy. By the way, this particular chart here I got off of some website that really wanted to, you to notice the healthcare sector. That's why this is pulled out like a block of cheese. Okay, but notice the government piece right here, 26%. Then there's retail leisure because people go up there to travel and have a good time and then uh there's professionals and of course the healthcare. now i wrote a question here because uh it just occurred to me and you can do the same thing on your slides you have a question you can put it right on the slide and the question i have for you is why is it bad for an economy to have so many working for the government this is something to think about that's hard on an economy it doesn't mean it's wrong necessarily but it is hard now uh, let's look at California culture and California culture. Surfing is a big deal. Now, I could have picked a lot of things, but I just decided to pick surfing, okay? Um, and when you do yours, don't pick 
you know, five different things. Find something that interests you and and put it here. And I I uh, grew up around a lot of people that love the idea of surfing, and and uh, I taught with teachers that like to go surfing, even in their forties and fifties. Yeah, let's go surfing. I never did. I did some skateboarding and unicycling, but never surfing. What unicycling? What's that? Okay, here's religion in California, and uh, notice most Californians are uh, Christian, thirty three percent of them. But it's not. It's there's no religion has a majority. In other words, no religion has more than fifty percent. And then how about California culture and the arts? And I, I put a painting here. I, I I pulled this off of a uh, website that I knew had California art scene stuff from Laguna Beach. And I've been to Laguna Beach and seen the the art stuff there. It's pretty neat. And then performing arts. And these are students uh, doing some performing art things here, big in California. And I grew up around a lot of performing arts. It was big in my house. And um, right here, uh, Alaska culture, dog sledding, a big thing in Alaska. Well, why is dog sledding big in Alaska but not in California? Easy answer, right? Okay, keep going. And then um, there's Native Alaskan culture, which is uh, important in Alaska. And uh, now I don't know if this guy's a native. He probably is who's building this igloo right here. You see the snowshoes and some of the different implements of being, ba- being out on the tundra. And then here you, you see some Native American, uh, Native Alaskan women uh, looks like they're doing some sort of dance, right? I like the colors of their costumes. I'm calling them costumes. They're probably just festive costumes that they would not normally wear. And then um, here's some Alaska culture going on. You see the the uh, performing arts in Alaska and uh, something from the Alaska art scene uh, right here. All right. Both, now I'm going to compare and tell you how they are the same. Both Alaska and California have beautiful mountains this is mount denali or that is i'm not really sure i think this is because that's what i was looking up i just love this photo man isn't that gorgeous i just made me want to go there but he he's got his shirt off Uh, i wonder how cold it really is that the wind coming down off that mountain's got to be pretty chilly but he's showing what a man he is and he can handle it all right so uh and then this is a place i have been in california in fact i've gone hiking all up and through here and uh been around the back of these and it is beautiful behind there too lots of waterfalls in the yosemite valley by the way so you have beautiful mountains in both places but in case you hadn't figured it all out, and by the way, this is very obvious, and on yours, you can do very obvious also. Uh, it's much colder in Alaska than it is in California, and I picked um, January temperature. Uh, now, this is 71 through 2000. It's best if I could have got the same years in both. And you notice it's all the cold colors over here, and it shows you, uh, whoops, how cold it is. And then... Um, over here in California in uh, January, it is much warmer. Finally, I ask you to ask some questions, questions to think about. Why might a Californian or a Texan move to Alaska? All right. It's not it's not highly populated. There are not a lot of people there. A lot of space, not a lot of people. But still, what might get somebody to move there? And how are Alaskans like Texans. I gave you a photo to give you an idea. Now, a few things I want you to notice. There are not just images, but there are there's text on every page. I don't expect you to have this many slides. I have 16 slides. I expect you to have at least 10 to get a 100. Uh, and you can go more. I just felt like doing more. Um, let me show you a few features that make the whole slide making thing a little bit easier. The first one I want to show you is I'm not I'm not sure how long I've been. Okay, almost 10 minutes. Is this. Let's say you have a slide and you like the format on the slide and you want it and you want to use it again. If you click it like I did, see, I click the one with the fire and I I go control C for copy and control V for paste and now I have another one and I can I can change it and whatever, and then if I want to get rid of it. Now, what if I, oops, I didn't, oh, I didn't mean to do that. If you come over here, now this is on Google Chrome, not on, on PowerPoint, which you might be using, but PowerPoint has a similar feature. 
Uh, we'll just have to look for it and find it. I don't remember how to find it. But you go here and that's undo. That's your undo button. And just undo and come back. I have to use that a lot because I make mistakes. And I go, whoops, I want to go back. Okay. Um, and the other thing you have to pay attention to, you notice how these two are different colors. Well, the reason is, is because when I put this chart up here, uh, it didn't work against that background. All the words disappeared. And so I just, I right clicked on it. Uh, let's try that again. I let's try right click. You got to right click on the on the background, not in the text area. And that's what just happened there. And and I went to change background and I switched the color. Okay, very easy to do on PowerPoint too. And so I decided to stick here and go this. And the way I did each of these, I just kept copying and pasting each slide as I went along. And that way, what happens is. The, th the the colors that I've chosen stay, okay. And uh, I decided to put the the images on the right, the uh, text like this, and um, and and by the way, see the text box and how it ends over here. Sometimes you want it longer, sometimes you want it shorter. You don't want it that short, right? Okay. And um, and you notice how this one comes over here more. And it's okay if it overlaps like this. You don't have to pull it over because um, when you when you go to look at it without clicking on anything, it'll be like this. And of course, you can present it like this, big, and then um, you don't have any of those issues and problems. Okay, so that is how you do this. All right, and I'm gonna get out of this now, and I just wanted you to have an example.